guys, hey, it's John with Vision 360 Fire Financials. Hope you guys are all doing well. And today, we're gonna go over why I do not own bonds. And honestly, in my humble opinion, I think they're good maybe in some strategies, but for me particularly, definitely don't recommend them. And if you're a younger person, I don't really encourage them either. Seems like you have a lot more time and you can get way better returns for your money. I'm gonna show you on the screen now why there's an issue uh, with owning bonds currently. And then I'm gonna also give you guys a little awesome information at the very end of, you know, if you still wanna own bonds, there's something to where you can get inflation protection. So stick with me. All right, guys. Hey, so here we go. On the screen now, I wanna show you guys what the US Bureau of Labor says for the CPI index. So CPI index in April, which by the way, the consumer price index is what bases all the consumer goods, um, what the government bases it anyway. And obviously we know it's kind of skewed. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's skewed. Um, they said that it only rose 0.3% uh, seasonally adjusted for April. Um, most people know because they're seeing it at the grocery stores, at the you know gas pump, everything, right? The fuel pump, uh, you know that it's going up way more than that. But we see here what they say <clears throat> is over the last 12 rolling months, it has rose 8.3%. That's on their website right now, guys. And obviously, you know, that number is definitely skewed. 8.3% is still a lot. So, you know, the elephant in the room, when you have that high of per, uh, inflation, right? You're getting close to 10%, and that's the official inflation. I'm gonna show you guys here, that's not really the actual inflation, it's way worse. Um, you know, every seven years at 10%, your money's doubling or you're losing your purchasing power, either or, right? Half of that, uh, or you know, greater than half of that, actually. Um, so you're losing a lot of purchasing power, guys. And so it's just something to think about as you're hedging against this inflation. There's ways to do that. I've got videos for that, too. So check that out. But like I said, 8.3%. Um, index for all other items, right? All less items minus food and energy increased 0.6% up to 6.2% year over year. So that's anything minus food and energy, right? So they deem like other different goods and stuff like that. But here we go. On the screen, check out shadowstats.com. You can see where Shadowstats, I'm not a premium subscriber, but it'll still be delayed a little bit, yep, through March of 22, so it is delayed. <clears throat> We're actually getting close to the 20% mark now uh, for the real CPI, but uh, yeah, you can even see right here on their chart, right? They've graphed it right here to show what the government says it is versus what it actually is. And this one tracks everything, guys. They don't just do, hey, they take like, this the CPI, by the way, if you don't already know, is tracked. Basically, they take goods, right? And from one year to the next, they track how much they've gone up. So like a gallon of milk and a gallon of milk in a year, how much has it gone up? How much has it changed? The issue with it is, is they take the CPI and maybe they take a gallon of milk and then a year later they don't take that same gallon of milk they may take a different brand or an off brand or something else to where it's very similar but it's not quite that same gallon of milk just to be able to bring the numbers lower so it is not very accurate i'll put it that way uh, and the worst part about it is is you know this is your guys money this is your freedom this is your time so this is why you should, it matters why you should pay attention here so like I said, we know real inflation numbers now, you know, right here back in March, we're looking at about 17%. Now we're almost 20%. So there's not a lot of different things that you can do right now, like long-term growth to really avoid some of this inflation, right? You're always gonna feel it. The wealthier are feeling it, the poor are feeling it, right? Everybody's feeling it. What I will say is it's gonna change your investment approach, right? So that being said, on the screen now, we see here just a hypothetical slash real scenario ever since 1926 to 2019. So delayed a few years, right? But that's fine. It gives us the grand picture of $1 invested into the market versus small cap stocks, large cap stocks, and also into government bonds and securities and what that dollar would have grown to and become. So taking historical data, that is, right? So that's why I like to do dividend portfolio, dividend stock investing, and I've got videos on that, a galore of them. You can go check them out, uh, analyze companies, and also you can even get my portfolio for free. You can check it out and see what I invest in. 
But like I said, I love getting paid passive income that's growing double digits, you know, like high single to double digits, year over year dividend and growth, right? That CAGR, it's amazing. And then also the share appreciation and, you know, long-term share appreciation, right? Like right now we're in red a lot on most of the market. The market, the S&P, last time I checked, NASDAQ's down uh, over like over 25%. Year to date, I want to say it was 8, 28% last time I looked. Um, year to date, depending on which metric you use, and the S&P was about 10% less of that, about 18. So we're getting very close to the 20% where some deem that the bear, um, bear market uh, numbers. But honestly, if you look at GDP growth and everything else, we're already in a bear market technically, if we look, use the old metrics. That being said, why would I want to buy a 10 year, 30 year treasury and lock money up at only, you know, two or 3% return. You have to be crazy, literally crazy if you're going to do that because you're just giving your money away and expecting to get less of it back. How does that make any sense, guys? It doesn't make any sense to me. So we see here even the performance of uh, small caps and large caps way outperformed any type of treasuries and or long term bonds, right? And we see here over long-term inflation, that $1 would have actually grown to quote unquote $14. It's just because it was devalued, the currency. So what you used to buy for $1 in 2019 cost $14 then, okay? And it's a little, you know, some of the statistics aren't 100% accurate, right? Some people will say, oh, that's a one to 20 swap. It depends, you get the idea though. So like I said, we see here that, you know, that is way off from if you would have been in the market. And then if we couple real estate with that, real estate is proven to give about the same and or even higher returns, especially if you're doing rental properties, higher returns in the market. Uh, and I got another great video on that as well on Fundrise, which is a good passive income real estate uh, investment to utilize. So why this matters and why you should care? It's because if you're young, and even if you're not young, this still applies even if you're old watching this. And that's not any offense, right? Uh, everybody gets to be you know older and there's nothing wrong with that in knowledge and experience right you hope so anyways uh, the thing that I would recommend doing is not being so much in the 50 50 swap or the 80 20 swap I would be diversified I would have all of my stock holdings and value and dividend plays and the aristocrats so dividend aristocrats if you don't know 25 years or more they've raised their dividends and so I'd rather be in companies that pay strong dividends growing dividends and are constantly growing that more and more and more all the time, year over year, and have a good track record versus being in the FANG stocks or the ones that are the blow by stocks. You know, I'm not saying Tesla is going to go anywhere, I'm not saying Amazon is going to go anywhere, but they don't offer any real value paid back to the shareholder at the present moment. Granted, I also have Amazon in my one dividend portfolio because long term, I believe eventually they will pay a dividend. Um, that being said, uh, like I said, it's just something to think about why you maybe should consider not owning bonds because, you know, it can hurt you over time. So the returns aren't that good. There's no share price appreciation other than if you buy a bond on a cheap, right? So if you buy it at a, say, 20 or 30% discount, sell it a year later, yeah, you made some money, right? So somebody could put in the comments, well, you can make appreciation that way. That's true. But typically, it's fixed interest, right? Uh, and there's all kinds of bonds. You've got government bonds, treasury bonds. Um, You've even got corporate bonds. Corporate bonds are a lot more risky. But they also yield a higher return. But you have to ask yourself, if I was gonna get a fixed rate of interest, when I know I can get a pretty good rate of return just in dividends and passive cash flow with real estate and dividends, why would I choose to even own the bonds, right? So it diversifying everything you do, guys. And the last thing, if you stuck with me this long, the bonus, right? So there are tips, treasury index protected securities, right? May have butchered that a little bit, but basically it is uh, a treasury protected note that bases its uh, return off against the CPI. And then you also have a thing called I-bonds, guys. So I-bonds are something that are offered by the US Treasury, okay? And you can get an I-bond. I-bonds are also quote unquote CPI uh, return. So basically they take the last previous six months of CPI and that is the return that return and or slightly above uh, typically the return of what these buy bonds pay. So basically they're just keeping up with inflation guys. Uh, there's a few stipulations on them. For example, um, $10,000 of buy bonds for the calendar year for an individual. 
Uh, if you have a company or LLCs, you can do 10,000 for each of those too, though. Something to think about. And then also you have to give with your CPA on that. Another thing to think about is if you have a spouse, you can also have more, right? And then if you have back taxes or something that are owed to you, you can take up to $5,000 if you are of that back tax money owed to you and buy, use it and just say, I want I bonds instead. So technically you could do 15,000 a year. Uh, but like I said, you got to do your own research on that as well. Uh, but it's an idea if you are a very conservative investor and maybe you don't want to take any risk at all or maybe you're you know, in, you're older and you just want to preserve your wealth. Something to think about. Uh, I think a diversified approach to everything right now is very critical. So I'm going to continue bringing you guys awesome content on you know, dividend stocks, passive income, uh, fund rise, you know, showing you guys that. Right now I'm not putting a lot of money into all those things because I'm becoming completely debt free myself which is going to be very soon actually sooner than I thought um, and uh, you know showing you guys my journey as I go right so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you did please hit that like also drop me a comment where you're watching from and also uh, you know if you are experiencing the same things because you know, obviously we're all experiencing it regardless to some or lesser extent right greater or lesser so until next time you guys tell me how it is and take care